Last week, we sat down with Cliff Zlotnick, the Z-Man. Your products did very well. At the time I sold it, Microbin was the number one antimicrobial brand in the industry, and Unsmoke was the number one, you know, odor removal restoration brand. Helping you shorten your dang learning curve. Get Microman. I put that sh in everything. Uh, he, we teased some about another historical figure, Lloyd Weaver. I want to read a portion from what Pete Consigli said. Pete Consigli, Global Watchdog. And he names Cliff Zlotnick. There he goes, a young Cliff Zlotnick. So you got Lloyd Weaver, Martin uh, L. King. Well, Cliff Zlotnick, who's you know, also an industry icon. Uh, wrote four words. Igniter of an industry. Uh, Cliff Slotnick and Claude Blackburn. This penultimate article from Pete Consigli, the March 2007 Cleaning and Restoration, Founding Fathers of Restoration. Uh, Lloyd introduced the first specially desi specialty design porta dryer for on location wet carpet drying. While that might not seem like much in today's sophisticated world, 35 years ago, this was written in 2007, Lloyd's methodology challenged the rug cleaning establishment in its in-plant wet carpet service. Lloyd also infuriated the fire restoration establishment as he encouraged carpet cleaners to diversify. PropertyRestorationHistory.com um, So, pretty funny. A lot of, you can't do that! Uh, our industry, at one point, the leaders, the big dogs, were the carpet cleaning uh, people. I can remember I started in 2002. We still hung carpet uh, in the warehouse in our service master location in Ventura, California. Cliff is going to share some of this is a recap of some of the conversation from uh, last week's episode 87. But we also have some new content, including... Uh, footage with Lloyd Weaver's sons, Lance and Lloyd Jr. PropertyRestorationHistory.com You are hearing the voice of Property Restoration Royalty. This is Cliff the Z-Man Zlotnik on the Diojo Podcast. Enter an audio-visual experience like, like no other. Underground rap and it's real. We've got, obviously, always a lot of things I'd like to talk to you about. I recorded with the boys, so uh, the Weaver boys, so I'd like to put, eventually kind of weave that together to do an episode on Lloyd. Uh, John, it's kind of the old adage, the necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> this blows my mind. You are seeing and hearing from Lloyd Weaver's family. We've got Lloyd Jr., Lance, and Michael, uh, Lloyd's grandson, who was very close with Lloyd. Um, I actually posted a video where Claude Back Blackburn, founder of Dry Ease, talks about one of his interactions with Lloyd and the impression that left on him. Michael reached out and we were able to talk about um, some of their side of the story and their perspectives on Lloyd. And so I've been weaving working back from actually the first article credit to Michelle Blevins and she worked with Pete Consigli. Um, she wrote a great, a fantastic article recapping some of the history of the industry. That turned me on to Pete's article, propertyrestorationhistory.com. A pursuit of Pete for some elements of history and my road trip with Pete in 2021 after the RAA convention. And um, so I've been collecting some of these interviews and conversations, trying to weave these pieces together. This is a treat. This is, we're talking to Lloyd Weaver's um, sons and grandson. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much how it happened. I mean, Dad, the process of tearing everything out was like, there's got to be a better way. Because one of the issues that we ran into with that flood was the silt. Huh. And, um, you know, Part of the experimentation with drying was, you know, to get he, – he did the drying, but then he was also doing some different things, which is also pre-rug beater. Um, he would lay them on – there you go, Lance. I got you. <laughs> he would lay these rugs on these old concrete spillways from these smaller lakes and anchor them in there and then let the water go across them and 
slowly remove that fine silt out of like, you know, some of these were high-end Iranian sarooks, you know, five, six thousand dollar rugs. Uh. And um so some of that was even that was a that was a wet method, but that was pre rug beater. Yeah. You know, getting some of that those stuff because of the fine lint or silt from the uh from that flood. So that was the catalyst, wouldn't you say, Lance? Absolutely. Yep. So you just had a real neat way of saying, you know, kind of use what you have to try to to solve the the issue at hand, huh? Most most definitely. How to not suck. I have a microphone. The last minute we changed it to how to suck less at estimating. And you don't. Habits for better project outcomes. So you will listen to every word I have to say! He even told me one time when he first started cleaning carpet, he would come upon uh, some wool... Uh, uh, rugs, beautiful wool rugs that were uh, fastened to the floor, and they were fairly worn in the middle. And he would cut them in half, flip them around, and stitch the unworn edges back into the oh. middle, and then tack it back down again. And then people that really didn't have a lot of money to spend now had virtually a new rug in the middle, and the uh, furniture around the perimeter covered the worn yeah. area. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was a character. There wasn't much. <laughs> it even goes back back further than I won't digress on it, but it goes way back further than the water damage. He and his father uh, built a uh, tank track type motorcycle called a pack track, and it was actually uh, shown on American Restoration. Wade Property Restoration History dot com. Because I remember I took his class, you know, because that's, you know, he taught me uh, how to do water damage. And I remember taking the class and I remember different people would like ask him questions. And, you know, like one of the questions is, um, how do you know how many pieces of equipment, you know, you should put on the job? And he would say, well, it's directly proportional to the number of pieces of equipment that you have on your truck. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone will ask, well, how do you know when you have enough? He says, when you blow a fuse, you, you <laughs> take one out. And But, I mean, if you think about it, uh, it's very true, particularly how do you know if you have enough equipment. You know, you do want to dry as fast as you can. You do want to, you know, get as much uh, energy change and drying capability and air movement uh, as you can get. So, I mean, he was exactly right. Uh, flood the Diojo email with um, rage comments. How dare Cliff um, promote this? Hello, insurance company. I've got an insurance claim. These in the early 80s. So the likelihood that a carpet cleaner had too much equipment was probably pretty low. A, uh, a lot of restorers are not putting enough equipment or the right mix of equipment or checking to see um, you know, whether their drying strategy is achieving what they set out to do, if they even have a stated drying strategy. So temperature on your blood, just wait until what Cliff's about to say in a few seconds. Did And I'll tell you, John, I, you have all this three day drying business. We used to guarantee we were going to dry these houses in three days, you know, beginning in the 70s. And you dare. What did you say to me? And we always did. What did you say to me? You know, we were able to do it. PropertyRestorationHistory.com Well, great. If we didn't ruffle any feathers with what we said last week in your expanded conversation on the Diojo podcast, now we're sure to get some feathers ruffled. Cliff, quick, let's change topics just for a second. Okay, let's get back to talking about Lloyd Weaver. Let's bring a new character in to help us... Uh, discuss this restoration founding father i'm talking to uh jim thompson look my life is one disaster after another opportunity is that fleeting moment between everyone saying it can't be done and everyone doing it and you wrote mm -hmm. the um opening to his book right the introduction yeah yeah Jim Thompson has put his 40 years of experience in disaster restoration, large loss in industry, marketing and sales and production into a book. My life is one disaster after another. There it is. The title is easy. I've had a plaque for many years in my office that said, life is one disaster after another. I think Jim's story uh, is very interesting. And... 
um, you know, when Lloyd and I met him, you know, he was a French or Storks franchisee of ours in the okay. St. St. Louis area. And uh, when we, you know, uh, Lloyd and I went out there, and I remember Jim's truck, um, I could see. Uh, from one side clear through the other, and, and it wasn't through windows. I mean, he actually had rust holes <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> on, on both sides, uh, you know, on both sides of the truck. But, uh, you know, Jim was uh, a quick learner, and, and uh, Jim is the best restoration salesperson uh i know i mean he's really unbelievable at it because i think he has empathy uh he gets people to trust him uh you know if i had a large loss and uh you know he's probably the guy that i would want to make the you know the sales presentation he's just really really good at it i dedicated the, the book to uh to cliff and lloyd modern restore what it was like being a part of an industry that's evolving because it evolved out of cleaning, right? And exactly like you're saying, there's cleaning. It actually came from the rug plants right. of the 40s and 50s and early 60s. Yep. And when we first put Lloyd fans underneath carpets, adjusters would always have them taken out and the throw the pads on the way and then hanging in these big 40 foot drying yep. chambers of the, yep. of the drying of the day. You couldn't dry on site, for gosh sakes. You know, it was a jute carpet. It would shrink on you, et cetera. And the uh, rug cleaning plants had carpet drying where they'd take a whole house full of furniture and run them up 50, you know, 40, 50 feet in the air and have furnaces going. That's how, that's how drying was done in those days. Lloyd worked for years getting the pressures correct on his carpet fan. Huh. So that's what I'm saying about... Leonardo da Vinci, no one understands the work it took to take a W.W. Granger squirrel cage out of a residential and have it float the carpet and have it dry the carpet and positive pressurize the carpet. Realize now, back in those days, a lot of it was jute carpet and horsehair pad. That's yeah. different than our action backs and stuff now. Yeah. You see? Lloyd, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. PropertyRestorationHistory.com he enjoy some of the personalities more so than others in some of the organizations or he he did and it seemed like it was fairly polarized he either very much enjoyed them or they did not get <laughs> along well yeah um, i would probably rank cliff as one of his best friends yeah. ever i yeah. i remember we Lloyd and i are both pilots and we've flown for 45 plus years and i remember there was a meeting in bozeman montana and cliff was it Cliff and Arnold? Must have just been Cliff. Boy, and did we meet him in Bozeman, or did he trag along with us in that little tiny 172 four-seater on the flight over? That was one Thank of the first times I met Cliff, and he <laughs> couldn't have been in his mid-20s, maybe? Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah Cliff, was a, Cliff was a real close... Uh, Close guy with he, him. Cliff was a prankster. There was a side of Cliff a lot of people didn't know about. It. I could tell you stories, John, that, but, but we don't want to put those on the documentation. I, I spent a number of some time out at, at his place in Pittsburgh and then with his brother Arnold, too. So those guys were, uh, they were a couple characters. It's the Diojo podcast. One listener phrased it best annoying but helpful. So. If on Thursdays you need to be annoyed, but helped, give us a listen. What's that now? Yo, yo. <laughs> I'm just I'm going to knock out any freaking loss in the country. And I knocked out the biggest of the biggest of the biggest. And uh, got her done, got paid, and got the hell out of there. Opportunity is that fleeting moment between everyone saying it can't be done and everyone doing it. Hmm. Started with a Sears wet fact and a tri-jet fogger, for gosh sakes. $35 for my answering service was a... A burden, you know. <laughs> okay, so so can we pause there for a minute? Because that that question gets all asked all the time. What equipment is essential for me to start my business? And you know, on the social medias, it's you know, you need this laundry list of things, and you just said it right. You need a friggin' shop vac and a spray bottle, right? <laughs> shop vac and a spray bottle. I'll tell you what. Every day.